Hello and welcome everybody. MCTV is uh, breaking new grounds and entering a new frontier. It is great to have you on more than a number of reasons. We are playing high school football in the state of Michigan. You're here for week two. We've got Dow High and the Saginaw High Trojans matching up in a Saginaw Valley Red Division game. Both teams are early into their seasons and uh, both teams have a lot to prove to their programs. My name is Dale Robbins. I've got a reunion story to tell you throughout tonight's game that is exciting for me. I feel really young again, so thanks for having me in your living room. This is my play-by-play -play partner, my color man from Northwood University's Timberwolves. This is Coach Rich Violet. He too has some reunion tales to tell tonight. And Coach, we're going to do that. Dow's 1-0, Saginaw's 0-1. The first year head coach of these Dow High Chargers is a creaker, so we're both we're, we're all tied by blood in that sense, but you've known this young fellow since he first set on a, a pair of pads uh, and a I helmet sure on have. his hat. I sure have. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. It's, it's Friday night football. This is awesome. It's a great venue. Uh, wow. And then to be able to talk to Coach Matt Peterson and kind of relive the old days. Sure. Talk about football. Talk about football in a way that him and I know, you know, the schemes and, and whatnot talk about how the players are doing, how they're playing. It's just, it, it was just a pleasure. And Matt was so great to me, opened up the film study for me, uh, you know, gave me all the time he could when we talked by phone. Sure. So he helped me along so we could prepare for tonight's game. So well, I'm really excited for him. I'm excited to call this game with you, Dale. Looking forward to it. Well, I will share this with our viewers that uh, Rich has done a couple of TV. We do, of course, Northwood Replay. Rich and I have done that for the last three years together. The Northwood program that runs weekly, that recaps the previous week's games, and we set up the following with Coach Leonard Haynes. And uh, we're not doing that this fall for obvious COVID reasons, but also the fact that Rich and I doing the internet and radio broadcast for Northwood, MCTV is coming during the community health games, and they have actually recorded recorded our broadcast and so we're dual dual dipping we're doing TV while we're actually on the radio and internet so Rich has a little sense but tonight we got a telestrator in his hands we're going to probably change color it'll be a rainbow by the time we finish but Coach Violet's going to have a blast with that and we are really excited to do this I understand with us live streaming with us going live on channel 189 and the different uh, the different platforms that MCTV is venturing into here in 2020 we're excited for tonight's ball game because it's football fall and both me and Coach Violet got the fever and we are just excited to be a part of your Friday night. The rebroadcast over the next several days, we encourage you to check out the channel guide and find out when this game will be replayed. And more importantly, this is a Saginaw Valley League back busting heads starting on the 50 and this one's at the Midland Community Stadium. Midland's on the road tonight. That makes Dow High the host here and we're excited to have you for that contest. And coach, we got to go get good seating uh, just because I want the soft chair. You want the soft chair? I, so I get, for the, the I get the hard chair. That's okay. All right. That's okay. Same Dale. old, same old. I'm just looking forward to football. I mean, it's so great to have football back. It and, is. Uh, and it's again, it's Friday night, and and, I, and again, talking to Coach Peterson, he's thrilled for these kids. And I'm going to be telling some stories throughout the game tonight that you're going to want to tune in for for sure, uh, because he's proud of these young guys through this whole pandemic situation. They've just held their heads up, and they've done great. So, looking forward to it. Are you ready for some football? MCTV is, and we got it coming right now. Hello, and happy Friday evening. It's Friday night, and it's football, and it's fun, and it's happening at Midland Community Stadium here in Midland, Michigan. The Trojans of Saginaw High have come to town sporting an 0-1 record, suffering a loss in their opening conference game last Friday, the first Friday of the season for all high school teams, and many had the bye the first season. The Dow High Chargers now Rich Violet having their second uh, home game back to back and they're only playing six this year the state's only playing six games Midland Dow gets four of those at home and one of them they have to be the visiting team in the final game of the season against Midland High so they're getting four out of six games on their home turf that's got to be comfortable all oh, very comfortable and, and what a way to start out the season having two home games on your on your home field it's uh, 
And Dale, great to be with you here tonight. Indeed, Boy, buddy. Friday night football, nothing like it. We uh, had an itch, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> Looking forward to calling this game. It's special for me. Uh, Coach P, special in my heart. So let's, uh, let's do it. Right now we will. There's the kickoff. Got a punch kick down around the 30-yard line. Received there by the middle. Loose ball. Dow extremely successful in week one against Western in collecting anything that was in the air on the ground, according to Coach Matt Peterson. You know, they wanted to keep it away, I'm sure, from their athletes. Saginaw's got some tremendous athletes. You don't want to leave them out in space. And that was a little pooch kick, probably seen something on film that they thought they could take advantage of. And uh, But they gave up good field position there. Yeah, that's going to give the Trojans the ball at their own 42-yard line. An absolutely spectacular fall, first Friday, fall 2020 in mid-Michigan. Daytime highs around 84. Our game time temp is right around 78 degrees at kickoff. Very little wind right now. And the Trojans will go and start to play with a whistle. We'll see if they were lined up incorrectly or not. I think somebody moved on the Saginaw side of the ball, to be honest with you. I think they got a little Saginaw. nervous. Yep. They'll march at five. Back judge made the call on the defense, defensive side of the football. Well, just to bring a little history, Rich and I have been doing uh, Northwood replay on MCTV for the last couple of football seasons for Northwood University. That's not happening in 2020. Football in the GLEAC's not, but boy, there's high school football, and we're here for you. Whoa, there's an attack right there. Yeah, nice play, play by play. King Fritz. Do it again. That's Jeff, yeah. uh, Dawson Studebaker, number two. And Dawson's a leader, leading tackler on this team, or he was in, in week one, and he is definitely a leader on this team. And he'll be from sideline to sideline. He'll be all over the place. And you can see he just stunned on that play and got into backfield quickly. Antoine Hayes, the 10th grade running back, number 23 out of Saginaw High. As soon as he had the football, Studebaker, nearly had it as well and dropped him for a loss. That's a huge loss on top of the penalty. It, we're looking at second down and 21 yards to go on the first possession for the Trojans. Handoff straight up the gut over the 30 to about the 34 yard line. And, and Dow will, will show a lot of different fronts in this defense. They, their base D is usually a 5-2, but it depends on what the tendencies are of the other team. That time they had three down linemen in a long situation, passing situation, so they had more DBs in the, in, the, in the secondary. Just underway on a Friday night at Midland Community Stadium. Dale Robbins, Rich Violet, it's great to have you. And as importantly, it's great to have football happening. And that's why we're here. MCTV is breaking some barriers. We'll tell you more about that as tonight's game goes on. Quickly oh, into the back great field again. Oh, play. Aiden Wardell. I believe that was Aiden at that defensive end position, and he just shot the gap, got in the backfield. The running back had no opportunity. A penalty, a loss, a small gain, and another loss. It'll bring up third and a bundle. And I know... Lord uh, says 24. Third and 24. Clock runs at 10 minutes, first quarter. Aiden Wardell, Nick Wardell's son. Is that right? Coach Wardell. Hi to you. He probably wrestles. He probably wrestles in the sure winter, doesn't he? I'm sure he's a tough kid because his dad sure is. He wrestles. Third and 24. It's a punt. Takes a Trojan bounce. Hits at about the 42. Goes inside of Dow territory. Comes to rest about the 46-yard line. So this Charger offense has got their hands on the football for the first time, and they're successful with the ball in their hand. They rallied 51 points a week ago against Bay City Central, the Wolves, here, and uh, their defense played well as well. Did the Dow defense shut them down? Only 12 points for the part of the Wolves from Bay City. Mm -hmm. That was a conference win, as tonight is also a conference game win against Saginaw High, as we are in the Saginaw Valley Red Division playing football. First and ten, nine and a half to play first quarter. From the shotgun in the spread offense. A little swing pass out to the right side. It's complete. There, receiver was Caden Kritz. Your quarterback 
for the Chargers is Jake Bacus. Bacus just a sophomore. A little bit about him, Coach. Yeah, a uh, great athlete, according to Coach Peterson. Uh, big kid. Um, just composure. You know, first game last week. Uh, handled it well. He'll handle it well here. Multiple formations. This this Dow High Charger offense will get into multiple formations. Look at this. Uh, spread, looks like. Bacus in a lone set back to his left. He's going to roll that way. Looks out. Second time, second play, second pass. It's complete down here to Carter Coates. Coates is complete. It'll be near a first down, just shy of the 30. And that's where the stick sets for the first down. We'll likely see a measurement if they don't give it to him automatically. The style Charger team won't be afraid to uh, pound the ball at times. They'll play a little guard tackle pull. They'll do a little option. And they'll take their shots vertical downfield. That does move the stick. It's first and 10. Line of scrimmage is the Trojan 30-yard line. And the sophomore quarterback, 6'5", 210 pounds, and he's in the 10th grade. Chances are he's got some growing to do. For and that's sure. Jack Bacus from the shotgun in an empty backfield. This time looks left again. Has a receiver. It's complete right there to Tucker Pomeranke. Pomeranke darts forward for nearly another first down. We'll see where the mark is. If it's on the 20, they are moving the sticks. Consecutive back-to-back -back first downs. Good first possession by Coach Matt Peterson, first-year head coach here at Dow High School. His first possession here in tonight's game. Hey, what a great job Bacchus did. He had a lineman coming at him. He was unblocked. He stayed in the pocket. He knew it was a quick out pattern, and he, and he completed it. <laughs> Clock runs 7.45 to play first quarter. Bacchus rolls right this time. Looks in the air. Man open, and it's caught and complete inside the 10 down to the 5. Nice catch. Number 25 on the other end of that is Jack Erickson. Erickson, a senior, 6'2", 180 pounds. Play some defensive back as well as his Erickson wide receiver role. Another down first down. 15, it's first and goal for the Chargers. And if he hits and if he hits his receiver in stride, he had to reach back for it a little bit. If he leads him with the ball, he scores a touchdown for sure. There's a look at it again. Quick strike. Nice catch on the other side of the throw by Erickson. First and goal. No huddle. Spread. Beck is going to stay on his feet. Gives it up wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Completed. It's from Beckus to Lakos. Jack Beckus' pass complete. Beckus holds onto the ball long enough, lets the play develop, and then just throws a strike to the corner of the end zone. Seven minutes, four seconds left on the first quarter clock. Dow's first possession, they march it. About 54 yards for the first score of tonight's game. Now on for the extra point. It's up. And Hayden the Chargers are sitting at good. seven thanks to the Dow foot Chargers seven. of Hayden Hetherington. Second at Trojan Zero. Here's the touchdown again, Rich. Okay. You'll see Backus will roll out this way. The receiver is going to release. I guess our telestrator wasn't working, but you can see Bacchus is rolling out. He's waiting, waiting, and he throws a strike to the receiver for a touchdown. Nice catch by Lakos. Well, there's a good opening drive. Keep in mind, these young fellas have had over 13 business days to practice for their first game a week ago Friday. Four, four days this week and today's walkthrough for game two. Uh, we talked to Coach Matt Peterson, and you had conversation with him yesterday. Uh, did you feel young again when you were talking to one oh, of the youth it was, football kids? It was so fun because, one, we were catching up on old times you bet. and family. Heatherington gets rid of it. Bit of a short kick, fielded at the 20, and it's tripped up there. Good defense again on the return. That's kind of who they're trying to avoid. Yeah, in Brandon all fairness. Scott. Charger, Brandon Charger Scott in on the tackle, doing a great job on special teams, getting, getting the down Chargers. there and making the play. Atkins on the return, and he's tripped up at about the 27-yard line, where the Trojans now with their second possession. 
three and out, and they ended up on a fourth and really long following their first series, trying to right themselves now as they trail it, as you can see, by seven. You know, Coach, uh, talking to Coach P again, uh, tough year. You know, pandemic, COVID, how did the players handle it? He said they were just phenomenal. Yeah. They were great. Even in the downtime, they were not missing any optional workouts and things. So he was very proud of the kids. And rightfully so. From the shotgun is Atkins. Atkins oh. on the pitch. It's over his running back shoulder. We'll see who comes up with it. It'll be a battle. Dow defenseman right there. We'll see who comes away with it. It appears it Nick Fang it's on the wrapped in green. So I'm going to say number it 50. looks like number 60 came away, but there's not a number 60. 50. Had an O's. It's Xavier St. John, a linebacker. And I'll tell you what, he was flying to the ball. Yes, he was. And, you know, and that's one of the things that they preach here is play fast, play physical. And when the ball was on the ground, he had a, he had a great opportunity. He comes in, and he gets to the ball. I mean, he just... Uh, well, they all hustled the DB. And in fairness, the running back is coming the other way and has to come over his shoulder and stop. And that's where the defender just kicked it in. Backus whistle will stop play. Man was in motion left to right. It's going to be neutral zone, zone infraction there. Against the charges. It remains yeah. first down. They'll add five to that. Alec Kronowski was just a little eager. He's a senior. He's the center on offense and a D lineman. He is a stud. Uh, coach talked highly of all of these defensive linemen. Well, he by nature was a defender himself, was he, he not? He was. He was a great DB. Yep. Oh, and quarterback. He was both ways. Right. Ball pushed past back following the five-yard penalty of the 19-yard line. Vegas rolls right, throws right, man's open. It's complete. Inside the 20, down to the 10, to the 5. Did a couple of jukes and standing into the end zone, nearly untouched, certainly not challenged. Number 22 is Carter Coates. Coates in the end zone. No flags, no whistles. Here comes Hetherington for the extra point. Coates comes in motion, comes out of the backfield, perfect strike, then he does the rest on his own. He had blockers in front of him as well for those corners and safeties as well to make, make it odd. Snap is good, kick is good, and that's an extra point. 5.36 here in the first quarter. Two possessions, two touchdowns for this Northwood offense. Here's the replay, Rich. Okay, Backus gets the ball. You can see 22 going in motion. He's just going to do a little out pattern. Throws right in there. He makes a juke, gets outside, gets into the end zone. Knew which corner he's going to, didn't he? Yep. Well, everyone here for the Now I Fight song is on their feet. Well, not everybody. Most of them, though. Well, we have seen this place packed, and then we've seen it like it is tonight. What's cool is we are seeing this place lit up. Lights are on. Players are on the field. People are respecting the social distancing advisories that we're under, and everybody's following the rules. Hetherington, another short kick. That'll be taken at about the 24 and should have maybe been fallen on, chosen not to. Coming up with nowhere to go is Dylan Moore, the return man. Once again, Brandon Scott was down there first. He disrupted the return, and then he had plenty of help from the Dow Chargers. Trojans on their third possession. will start on their own 21-yard line. Boy, could you have painted a better night for this? What a beautiful night, yep. <clears throat> Trees are starting to change. Old man winter's not here yet, but uh, young fella fall has arrived and put its roots down in mid-Michigan. Colors over the last couple weeks have just been phenomenal. Handoff for sizable gain for the Trojans. And this one on the back right up the middle. Xavier St. John, right. linebacker, was able to get him down. 
Denea Blair on the carry. That's a gain of four yards. It'll bring up second, second and six. Ball placed on the 25. You can see Coach Peterson in his first year at H.H. Dow. Already got a win under his belt. Of course, for many, many years, 11 years in the program, Jason Watkins, the head coach here at Dow High. There's a little battle on the part of the Trojans. Yep. Stopped before first down and didn't stop until he got the first down, number nine. And I'm surprised they're running the direction of Charlie Hunkins. He's a three-year starter on that D-line, and he, he's a big rig. And honestly, that D-line did a good job there. A little sloppy in the tackling coming up from the secondary. It took a couple of hits to, to get the ball carrier down. Have we got Telestrator back yet, Matthew, or not? Richie's drawn some really nice drawings up here, but there is the replay. I don't have a number nine on my roster for you, so we'll just call him number nine for right now. Snap is high. Atkins, he goes up and gets it. Another handoff and another positive yard yardage gain for the Trojans. And it's Blair again. Right now, that offensive line for Saginaw, it is firing off the ball. They're, they're feeling that they're seeing something on the ground. And they're going to they're gonna try pounding it here a little bit. Well, they've got some sizable lads on that offensive line. Boy, they sure do. We don't have any weights listed but size. And if uh, you don't have to put... You don't have to put those young fellows on a scale to say, that was a big line right there, Rich. Yeah. They are opening some holes in this particular drive. Second man through. Nowhere to go. Dow closes it off quickly, but he gets him. The running back gets some help from a lineman behind him to get him a couple of positive yards. On the carry is number nine. That'll bring up a third and... Long five, we'll call it. The nose of the football is resting on the 36-yard line. Hunkins, Kowalski, Labby, all on that defensive line. A lot of times Aiden Wardell will come up there in that DN position. They're in a five-man front right now. Odd front. They're sensing they're going to run the ball again. Stacked in the offensive backfield. First man through is met behind the line of scrimmage. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up fourth down. Really no gain. Fourth and five. Yeah, Evan Karnowski does a good job coming up to make the tackle. On that carry, offensively, for the Trojans, was Dylan Moore. Well, they looked a little confused on the Saginaw high side of the ball. The punter is counting out the players, so they are in a fourth and long situation with the punter in. Play clock at 10. High snap, soft and easy, gets it away, not long, and a good kick to return, so let's do that. At the 50, 45, a little spin move down and around. That was Aiden Hunt on the return. Back to work comes the Charger offense. That's as quiet as that gets. First and ten for the sophomore Bacchus. From the shotgun. Spread and everybody's hanging out on his left. Four men in the slots and deep. Pressure from behind. He steps into it. Into the pocket, complete, waits for the pass down around the 20. First down, about a 25-yard gain. And that's complete there, number 21, Evan Kronokowski. Jack Vickis' pass complete to number 21, Evan Kronowski for the Chargers. is how we're saying that. I added an uh. Nearly inside a minute to play. Here in the first quarter, Dow on top, 14-0 over Saginaw High. Empty backfield. 
Back us again. Out into that flat, successful pass and completion. It's Wyatt Hasselhan on the reception. Pass complete to number six, Dominic Owen for the Chargers. Put down by number 18, Khalil Nash for the Trojans. Bring up second down for the Chargers. With the mark, second down, three to go. Ball on the Trojan 13-yard line. It's looking like the offense can do just about anything they want in the playbook right now. Uh, Saginaw High is, is backpedaling in their secondary for sure, giving up a lot of distance. Motion loads to the left side. A flag. It's going to be a defensive defensive penalty is the preliminary call. And that's too bad because Tucker Pomeranke was running an inside, oh, you could call it a slant or an inside screen. Right. I noticed last week they did that very successfully. Uh, inside screen, I believe it went for a touchdown. And uh, that was set up to do the same. Clock starts Will we get it off with seven, six, five seconds remaining first quarter. Coach Matt Peterson may be content with a 14-0 lead after a quarter of play. And allow it, now the clock has stopped. The game clock, they'll start it again. Two, one, and they get it off. Last play of the quarter. And it's on the ground. Bacchus is tackled back around the 21. What a rush. There was five yeah, defenders on Yeah, a lot of miscommunication there on the part of the offense. It was an obvious screenplay, but they didn't hold the line whatsoever, and they just let the entire defensive line of Saginaw come after him. Here's a look at that party that was started. Back is with nowhere to go. One, two, three, four, and the other defenders already got up. So five guys come off that D line and bury the youngster from Dow High School. We will swap ends and we get 12 new minutes on the clock. Dow comes out of the quarter with a 14 point lead and the football knocking on the door again of the Saginaw High Trojans. Well, we had talked about it being Matt Peterson's first year here at uh, here at Dow High, but in all fairness, he's a Midlander by birth. He's a Creeker by trade. Uh, School to Saginaw Valley. He has coached here at Dow High School under former head coach Watkins, who was here for 11 years. Matt also, for the last two years previous to this year, was over at Saginaw Heritage for the Hawks yep. as their head coach. Got out of coaching. Dow's position opened, having been an assistant here. Uh, played a great role. Already knew the kids. He's teaching here at Dow High. You know, he told me, he says he's got his dream job. He always wanted to be a teacher, and he loves history. He, he doing teaches it. history, and yep. he loves football. Yep. So, you know, he made it clear to me, hey, I'm doing my dream job, and that's, that's great. And the Saginaw defense has returned. Actually, Saginaw got on top of that ball uh, when they took down uh, Bacchus. So they are on O now, and the Charger defense is out on the field. Start the second quarter. I'll correct you on my bad. I had him down and deep there. All is fair in football. A loss. Boy, they're getting after it now. The Charger. Sorry, Dale. Didn't no. mean to interrupt you. I'm just saying, off the line, I'm looking number 54, I believe, Jason Labby, the uh, the guard, the left guard, put the pressure on Atkins. He did, and down. they were stunting number two, Dawson Studebaker, as well. He was coming up through the other hole. They were com they were coming at every gap. Saginaw had nowhere to go. That'll bring up uh, second, second and forever. <laughs> A loss of 10. 
Atkins and the Trojans now line of scrimmage is their own 13. Balls on the balls on the floor. I think the runner was down. Uh, we'll see if you now they're marking it where the where the offensive lineman came up with it. That's the mark. So I don't know that he was whistled down or his progress was stopped and had been whistled as stopped. So. But Dawson Studebaker and Aiden yeah. Wardell were all over that play. They're just hungry. Mm-hmm. Just hungry about it. It is third down. Here's the last play in a replay. You see Dawson right there, number two. He wants to shoot the gap. He's shooting the B gap. And then on the outside comes Aiden Wardell from the defensive end position. He makes the hit. The ball's on the ground, but the ball was down. And while we were away, the Chargers add two points to the 14 they've tallied in the first quarter. A safety. And you call him on the last play during the replay. It's only fair he ought to get the uh, sack in the end zone for the uh, for the safety. Here's a replay. Watch Studebaker again. Yep. Studebaker reads the play. He's coming downhill. That's not Studebaker. That's actually number. Uh, Studebaker was late. On the yeah. Game. I think that's 53. Yeah. See it, find it. That's Daniel Kowalczyk. Defense playing great for the Chargers right now. Getting off the line of scrimmage. Can't be stopped. Coming from the outside. Coming from the inside. You can just see um, the Saginaw High players a little depleted, I would say. Well, you know what? The, the in, in all fairness, uh, in, in transportation is tough. Saginaw's not that far, but uh, transportation is tough. The bus didn't get here till after 6 o'clock with a 7 o'clock start. It was about 10 after 6. And they didn't hustle in to, to suit up. Uh, and they kind of meandered out. There, there wasn't a lot of fire getting off the bus uh, for Saginaw. And, boy, Rich, we got here just uh, a little bit after 5 o'clock. And it was within minutes before, of course, as home team, the Chargers are here. But their boys were starting to wander out and playing in the grass. Oh, they were out doing their special tees, and they were getting ready for business. The kick following the safety will remain in Trojan territory. It's covered by number 51, Colin Deal. Correct. Yeah, Deal on the recovery, and that's where Backus and the rest of the Chargers will take over. It's right there. Hey, stick around. If you have a good memory, we'll put it to work, and if you don't, get a piece of paper and a uh, pencil, and I'll give you the, uh, the upcoming dates when you can watch some replays of tonight's event and where you can do that. A whole bunch of MCTV information we're going to be passing along to you here as we're getting things settled in. In the meantime, back us in the Charger offense, first and 10 from the Trojan 42, and they own a 16-0 lead. With that time you see in the uh, lower third, that's in the second quarter, so we're, we're striving towards the half of this one. Timeout, Saginaw High. Not sure what the coach for Saginaw High seen, but something wasn't looking right. They weren't lined up properly, so we decided to take a timeout. Probably a good timeout. Well, and you can you can ill afford being down 16. There's a lot of football game left, but uh, you're down 16 and a proven team that put 51 on the board last week against a good Bay City team. Now all of a sudden, if you see something that might might cause an error now this early, Absolutely. you're going to want to correct that. Absolutely. That's what Coach Wyatt did. Hey, you can watch replays of this H.H. Dow versus Saginaw homecoming football game on the MCTV network. Yeah, that's right. There's a bundle of them. MCTV's channels can be found on Charter Spectrum's channels 188 through 191 here in Midland and through channel 99 on AT&T's U-verse. This game is also live streaming, yeah, on Midland MCTV's Community uh, Voices YouTube channel tonight, as well as you can check them out on the website at thecityofmidland.gov slash MCTV. Playback dates will be made available there as well. On the keep, it's around the left end is Caden Kritz. Kritz is in for a touchdown. Kritz from 42 out. 
and that was how you set up an inside screen. It was perfectly run. Backus allowed the lineman to come to him. He faked the ball carrier, turned the opposite way. Critch was coming inside, received the inside screen, and he did the rest on his own. And that young man can fly. The young junior, Caden Critz, turns it over to Harrington. Harrington to put on the extra point, and he does with that. The lead now sits at 23 to 0 with 9.30 to play first half. 23, Show us that screen, Richie. So he's running back towards the line of scrimmage, right? He just finds the Oh, hole. yeah, it's an inside screen, so... Backus just fakes to 21. He curls inside screen to number three, Crit, and he does the rest. He gets outside, and he just motors on down the sideline. One, side two, line. three blockers out in front of him to pick up yep. the Dees. <laughs> sure. We just wanted to show you, Matt, that he actually followed the exact path that Richie drew for his first time on <laughs> Telestrator. That was a solid memory of what I Woods promise I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this Telestrator right before we're done. <laughs> he will not. <laughs> A high spiraling kick, and it's going to be a attempt to run back. Probably not the right idea, but at least he didn't go into the end zone. So it'll come uh, it'll come back number nine again, see if we can't get you some documentation. Number nine seems to be a fairly active, playing a fairly active role for Saginaw, and we've not been able to, to get that information from any of our resources. So, <laughs> old number nine, that's what we're going with. That's a number I wore forever, too, so I, uh, I'm okay with that. That bell's going to ring all night long. That just sounded 23 times for the charges. First and 10 from their eight. They're buried deep again. Remember, their last possession ended up in a safety. They are in a precarious position for sure. If I'm, if I'm Dow, I'm smelling blood here, and I'm coming after them. The Dow defense has been in pursuit tonight. Atkins over the middle. That's his first completed pass, and it's out near the 20-yard line. Quarterback for Saginaw High did a good job. The snap was high, and he hit the slant receiver coming across the middle, and uh, good job by Saginaw. Dylan Moore on the catch, a sophomore. That gives him a little bit of breathing room, a 12-yard gain. Now under nine minutes to play. Game clock at 8.50. From the shotgun. Lone set back with him. Kind of a lofty shotgun pursuit. Atkins is going to keep it. He's out at the 20. A small game maybe, Richie. Yeah, great job by both Carter Co Coates because he's the safety. He has, to, he has to decide, am I going to stay with the receiver or if I'm going to come after the quarterback on that play? And also, they had uh, Dawson Studebaker following. So, we'll see it here on replay. So, quarterback's got the ball. He's rolling out. 22 has to make a decision. Is he going to stay with his receiver, or is he going to go and pick back another quarterback? Path. Yep. Clock now near eight minutes to play. First half. Nowhere, Nowhere to, to go. go. Who else? Number two. Yeah. Dawson Studebaker. I yeah. feel like he can stunt and do whatever he wants in this game pretty much. Number nine had no choice but to, to take that pop. And Studebaker wrestling a two-yard loss, we'll call it. Ball back on the 16. But make no mistake about it, the DNs have to do their job in this situation too because they have to contain. Pinch. That's and right. That's what they're doing. They're doing a great job. Right down the line of scrimmage for you here at Midland Community Stadium. Clock at seven and a half. Atkins out to number nine. The pass is, I think that was. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't blow the whistle. It wasn't a catch. It was a forward pass. Was it incomplete? Did it hit the ground? It sure looked Boy, like a forward pass wish, and an incompletion to me. Wish we had instant replay. Tucker Pomeranke <laughs> actually comes up. 
Tell me that wagon's not on it. Here it is. Pomeranke ends up in the end zone. No whistles, no flags. Here it is, Richie. Yeah, so the quarterback has the ball, and he's throwing it forward to the receiver, and he dropped it. So I'm not sure... I'm not sure what happened in this situation. Did that they should consider have been an that? Pass. Was that maybe a lateral pass? It went down the line of scrimmage or behind, so it makes it a live ball. Boy, I know I'm getting old, Eisdale, but uh, well, mine that, had it as a forward pass. He seemed to be ahead of the line of scrimmage rather than behind. Absolutely. Maybe we can draw a line and see where those two are at. Atkins was from the shotgun, so he was certainly not at the line of scrimmage. And the receiver was just behind the D, the offensive end. So, well, they've not put points on the board for Pomeranke's return into the end zone. It reads fourth and 12 from the 18. So it was ruled an incomplete pass, but I heard no whistles. So no flags. It's the best punt of the night best on the part punt. of the Trojans. Indeed. Carter Coates, he's setting up his blockers. He's at the 50, 45, 40. Oh. Carts down the near side at the 30, 25, 20. Nice spin move, yeah. the 21-yard line. Unfortunately, they got Caden Critz on a block in the back, and it was questionable, but um, it, it was, was well up the field. It was well up the field on the edge, and, um, you know, in that situation, you just got to throw your hands up and not try to make that block. Flag fell on about the 40, so if that's the call, it'll be the point of the foul minus the penalty. Remembering the ball was fielded from the punt back around the Dow High 41, 42 yard line. Following the penalty on the return team, it'll be inside Trojan territory. So here's the look. Picked up at about the 40 yard line. Good block there. Another good block there. Here's the one coming then, right and there. Right there. Is where shoulder to shoulder, or did he get behind? Boy, it looked like he had his head in front of him. Back is low in the backfield. A little pressure on his backside. He gets it off. Back to the 40, and it's complete to number 25, Erickson. Erickson. Right to the Dow sideline out at the 30 from their own 47, a 17-yard gain for the Chargers. Well, I can see why Coach P likes this Jack, Jack Backus because, boy, he throws a sharp ball. He's BBs, isn't he? He throws BBs. And, you know, he's 6'5", 210. He's only a, he's only he's a, a sophomore. Puppy. He's a puppy, yeah. He'd be doing driver's training. He's a don't, do not good put him, looking quarterback. Don't put him in a Mini Cooper. He'll, he'll have to drive from the back seat. <laughs> Lone setback, motion moves to the left. Flag before the play gets developed. Going to be called against the Chargers. Motion to neutral zone fraction, so it'll back it up five. It was first and ten, and it's now first and fifteen instead of the thirty. It's the thirty-five. Dow on top, twenty-three to zero. Clock runs at 6.07, 6.06, 6.05 here in the first half. Motion again from the spread. Everybody's on the left side of Backus now. Looks, holds it up. He'll keep it himself. Back to the line of scrimmage. No loss, but no gain. It's second and 15. Yeah, and that was one of those plays where the Saginaw defensive line did a good job of penetrating. They, Backus had to, had to step up in the pocket. He had nowhere to go, and they were on him quickly. He had nobody in the secondary to throw to, and uh, you got to hand it to Saginaw High on that play. Yeah, well defended, and he's proven that he can be elusive if you get him past that line of scrimmage, and they wrapped him up. Actually, they'll count it as a loss of a yard. It's second and 16 from the 36 after the mark. Empty backfield with motion to the right. Shows it right, another goes screen. left, and it's knocked down. They were trying another inside screen. They went uh, right last time. They were trying it left this time. Good hands defensively by what looked to be a blitzer. And Linebacker Keith Ware gets his hands up and knocks the back his pass down. Right. And it's a good thing he did because the screen was open again. Yes. I would come back to it, too, to be quite honest with you. 
If it works, keep going to it. Clock stopped at 5.07 on the incomplete pass. Line of scrimmage is the 36. That's Saginaw's 36. It's Dow High with the football and a 23-0 lead here in the first half. Single setback. Beside Backus. Backus goes to the air. He's grabbed and he still continues on. That's a completed pass inside the 20. And completed to Carter Coates again. Coates on the reception. Yeah, great job right down the middle of the field. The composure of Backus is impressive for me. Okay, he was under pressure. He stepped up. Made a great pass down the middle. Goats in the middle. Goes up well to get that, too. Yes, he does. Talked about the athletes, to you, didn't he? Yep. Back to the action. First and ten from the 18. Backus. Rolls to his left. Looks up. On a flag. Corner touchdown. Route, touchdown. Number 22. If it worked, if it worked last Coates. time, if it worked last time to set you up for the, the near the end zone, go right back to that combo. And Coates and Backus match it up again. And Dale, what's impressive about that one is his corner route, and he puts air underneath the yep. ball, yeah. and he and he doesn't have to throw the bullet, right? He leads Coates, and it's a perfect throw, and Coates he hits runs him in to the football. Right, he throws to the flag. Nicely done. It had Heatherington on for the extra point. Tucker Pomeranke does a long snapping for the Chargers. Snap, hold, kick, all good. That makes the point good. It is 30 to, to zero. Here's a look at the touchdown to Coates. There's the air you're talking about, Coach. Yeah, you know, he had pressure from the outside from the DN from Saginaw High. He steps up in the pocket, and he does a great job of getting air under that ball and throwing it down to the corner and letting Coach run underneath of it. I had it as good. The point's not on the scoreboard yet, but I'm sure I said 30 following the... Six points for the touchdown to Coates and the extra point by, there it is, it's on our board. It must be the scorekeeper here at the yard. That's all right. Matt's making those fingers work great in the truck downstairs. He's doing his job. Four minutes, 32 seconds, says our game clock. Kick is away. Heatherington gets rid of it, fielded down inside the 10 at about the 5. Loose ball, he's got to go back for it at the 5, and he gets just back out to it. And number 9 saw himself on the, uh, on the end line, on the goal line, and scampered forward to get himself about 5 yards. If you're keeping count, you'll hear about 30 of those bells, I'm guessing. Coaches will be happy with special teams there. They didn't give up. They ran hard all the way to the ball. The receiver made it, you know, he, he dropped the ball, had a hard time getting going. But they stayed in their lanes, and then they converged on the ball. He had right. nowhere to go. Right. And, and they ran hard to the ball. And that's one of the keys for this game is fast and physical. Well, they're proving they're doing that. And I guess what's important is you, you look at, okay, what's your strength here? Your offense, your defense, what's going on? I'm actually seeing that out of uh, Matt Peterson's team. Uh, it's on both sides of the ball. He's got athletes that after 13 business days in camp and a game under their belt, they're playing hard and they're playing fast. Whistle stops that play. Atkins will pitch it back. Well, you know, I asked, I asked Coach, what, what type of team do you have this year, Coach? Be honest with me. And he said, you know, Coach, he says, they're young and inexperienced. He said, we had a lot of seniors when we graduated last year, but we got a lot of talent on this team, and they play fast. We, he said, we just need to see how quickly they grow up, and boy, I can tell you right now, they're playing well. Yeah. They are. From his own end zone, Atkins in a lone setback. He's going to roll left, throw left, up in the air. Nice catch. Gets it out near the 10. Not enough for a first. But on the other end is Dylan Moore. They've 
connected a couple times. They have Atkins and Moore. Yeah, and uh, Alex Lycos did a, did a nice job of defending on that play. He could have come up. He could have went for the interception. He elected not to. Just straight up wanted to make the tackle. Yep. And uh, and good 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 strong play by Alex. Beautiful moon, not nearly harvestable yet. But October is just around our corner, kids. Shotgun again, Atkins. This time quick over the middle. Busted up. Nice play defensively. Yeah, Brandon Scott, he was he was in the passing lane. He was able to get a hand out of it and knock it down. Good job from that safety position. Trojan pass intended for number 80, Karen McQueen for the Trojans. Incomplete pass. You see our... Time at the bottom of the screen, the play clocks. I just love looking at those defensive linemen, Labby and and Kowalsik and and I just you tough, bond with tough guys, guys like that, don't you? Tough coach? guys, love it. Yep. They're in the trenches. They never get any of the the, the glory, boys or the glory. Here comes Studebaker shooting the gap. Quick handoff off the center. Boy, look at that. 11 eight. guys in on the tackle. Sure seemed like it, didn't it? Oh, I, I could see only one other hat outside of that mass of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Short of the first down, they needed to get out to about the 17-yard line. They're about four yards shy of that, and Dow will get their hands on the football again before the half concludes with two and a half to play to make that happen. Back deep, awaiting that punt is Carter Coates. We'll take you right down the line of scrimmage and again and see if there's a rush I wouldn't, for a block. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think they're going to come after this. It's perfect. No, they're not. Playing punt return. Kicks it away from Coates. Coates is going to let it drop and just give the ball to Backus. It's out of bounds on the far side, on the visitor side of Midland Community Stadium. Rolls out, and the mark is at the 25. So it'll be first and 10 from the 25. That is the Trojan 25. And the young sophomore Bacchus will bring his chargers back to the field. And Jack is going to try to put a little magic together. A little picture of uh, Caleb Brensky on the sideline there. Caleb had a great game last week. I think he had, uh, I think he was in on a couple of touchdowns last week. A special teams pump block for a touchdown. Uh, and he's injured this week not playing. I get to watch him on film too. He's a tough football player, good football player. Beckus, pitch. This was going to go right inside the 20. Nice tackle defensively wow. by number 51. Sure was. Jamil Wilson. But good. Saginaw High. Good explosive acceleration on the part of Evan Kronowski. And Kronowski made that corner quick. It's going to end up being for a gain of about three. It'll be second and seven, we'll call it. Under center for the first time is Bacchus. A little misdirection. Hands off quickly to come over center. Nothing there for number 28. That's Aiden Wardell. And Wardell is stopped at that line of scrimmage. It'll be third and a long seven. Yeah, I couldn't tell. That almost looked like a little guard tackle trap, like an inside counter move. And um, usually you have your guards pull on that, kick the defenders, and it's misdirection. But second, a high played it well. Clock now at 44, 43, 42. That's first half time remaining from the shotguns back us. In motion is Kronowski. Kronowski, the motion man, gets the pass. It's completed. Carter Coates again on the reception. Great job getting down 10 and out. It moves the sticks. First and 10 from the 15. And boy, I got to tell you, both of those players were on the same page because that was a bullet, and he could only throw it in one spot to complete that. Timeout Chargers with 26 seconds left here on the halftime clock. Midland Community Stadium. Here's the last play to get him the first down, Coach. Receiver goes in motion. Jack's got the ball. He throws a bullet. 
Nice catch. Nice catch. Yep. Laid himself out Laid for the himself catch, out. too, did he not? And, and again, the only spot he could have thrown it because the defender was playing him well. Carter Coates, again, making a big play. Hey, so listen, if you like watching your favorite high school events here on MCTV, stay tuned as this fall we'll have a lot more games and events here on the MCTV network. MCTV volunteers and staff will be televising. You ready for this? Midland High's homecoming football game. That's next week. The Midland versus Dow football, volleyball, girls golf, and girls swimming matches are here on MCTV. Also check out our Facebook page for upcoming winter sports and other happier local community content on MCTV's networks. Clock runs 16, 15, 14 here. Following the timeout, not quite sure why the clock started. A loss back to the 25. Yeah, Saginaw High played that well. It looked like a little reverse action there. Keith Ware from Saginaw High was not fooled. He came up and made a great play on the on the running back. Actually, the receiver. Timeout for the Chargers. And we got us a replay. Yeah, so you see Dominique Owen basically coming out of a slot position, coming back around the quarterback, taking that replay. And then 24 did a great job staying home, making the play. <laughs> Probably. Brain Trust on the down sideline, sending the offense back out to conclude the half. Five seconds sit on the clock. Back as she's certainly close enough with the ball he throws to, to get something in the end zone. Sure. Whether he's going to flood an area or have a guy go wide and just run along the end zone line, let's see. And he's creative on his feet as well if they offer double coverage or something. Well, I can see. It looks like they're going to go vertical here. They got three by one. Everybody's on our Everybody's side. Everybody's going vertical to the to the end zone. That offense is spread. Backus looks right over the center. Got him there beat, it and it's a touchdown for the Chargers. Tucker Number four, Pomeranke. Tucker Pomeranke. Yeah. Pomeranke from Backus, and like that, well, when you go four wide like that, you've got four targets, right? And yeah. they're all in man. And he just laid the ball up there, and Tucker Pomeranke did the rest. He had four targets he could have thrown to. And as a matter of fact, Pomeranke beat two defenders, had a corner and a safety on him. He got deeper than both of them. And back is just out through the just defenders. Through them. Yep. And there sets Pomeranke. Yep. Hetherington. His fourth extra point of the night. Thirty-seven zero. And now to the replay. You'll see all of these guys lined up here. They're all gonna go vertical. Okay? Tucker Pomeranke is over here. He's gonna come down. He's still gonna stay vertical. He's gonna have two defenders on him back here. He's six foot one. All Jack does is throw the ball up high over the top. You can see the two defenders he just beat. And touchdown. Just like that. Get deep. As a defender, especially in that situation with seconds left on the clock, nobody gets deeper than you, right? That's right. And Absolutely. Bob got deeper than two of them on his side of the yep. football field. Nice play. I'm thinking it is 1.1. Second remaining, or is that 11? We lost some time after uh, the timeout. I, they rolled a bunch of numbers off there. Hetherington's going to get rid of it anyway. He'll kick it deep. Fielded down around the 10-yard line and brought back by number 9. Stopped by his own man, and he'll be dropped at about the 19-yard line. And our game clock has stopped at 3 seconds this time. A couple of the other things that uh, Coach Peterson wanted to get cleaned up coming into this game was pre-snap communication, making sure they're communicating better than they did in week one. Right. 
and special teams. They wanted to clean up the mistakes on special teams. Even though they scored some touchdowns on special teams last week, there were some things that they needed to clean up. And I'm telling you, these kick kickoffs, those guys are flying down in their lanes yep. and they're getting to the ball. Yep. So um, I don't think he's got any problems in this kickoff team. I can see that. <laughs> Trojans will let the clock expire. So 24 minutes are in the books with 24 remaining following halftime here. And your initial impressions, we talked about it and had some time in between. A whole bunch of hustle, Coach Violet, on both sides of the football for Matt Peterson and the Chargers is they just are firing all on all cylinders. And I continue to be amazed at the time that these guys have not had a chance to work together. And there, you're still some, seeing some of the, the mistakes of a young season football team and a young team playing a young season. But he's got these guys as disciplined as I can imagine anybody after less well, than two weeks. Well, and, yeah. and it's, a, it's a testament to the leadership both in the coaching staff but also on the, the, the seniors and the kids that are leading this team because they didn't miss any workouts even when covid was going right you know, with the pandemic and covid and being down small numbers small groups they got shut down but they didn't they still did their optional yep. workouts remember these kids didn't have any seven on seven this summer or any of that right and that's where you you're working on your footwork you're working on your reads your second all that stuff and he wanted to knock the rust off because of that from week one and and this is a good opportunity to do that. They're just, they're building. They build in week one. They're building in week two. Yep. And he's going to be ready with this team to face some stiffer competition down the road. We could have wore that out here tonight, buddy. We got, we got pants and shirts on. Could have wore our camo. Yeah. Camo. <laughs> just throw some, uh, some paint on you here. There's our halftime score. 37 to 0. And the Saginaw Trojans have a whole bunch of work to do and only half the time to do it now with two quarters already on the books. So, with no halftime, I'm going to kind of wait to throw back. We don't have a band and there's no dancing or karaoke going on, unless you want to bring that up right now. Oh, it'd be not good. No. So, I want to ask you a question because I'll share a little reunion. You've been talking about... Uh, uh, your relationship with not just Matt Peterson through the youth football program and the high school football program and the time you guys had together. You've seen him grow dramatically. And uh, do you have your favorite, whether it was as a DB or as a quarterback, do you have your favorite Matt Peterson story? You could, uh, <laughs> Well, it's funny you, you know, Man, we, we, we didn't, didn't talk about this. We didn't this, talk about this. But you, I, you got yeah, funny stories yeah. through life that you've shared. So come on. Well, bring it. Matt was our quarterback and our DB, and he was either his junior or senior year. We were doing a pregame speech, and I usually did the, the fire up pregame speech. Right. And uh, Matt was sitting in front of me. We had the whole team there. And I called my wife, and I said, what color are pansies? as far as a plant. Right. And she said, well, you can get them any color you want. I said, well, I need purple. I said, because we're playing a team today that's wearing purple uniforms. Okay. Okay, I won't go any further than that. Sure. And uh, I said, don't buy anything expensive because it's not coming back home. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I grabbed that plant and I got in front of the team and I started firing up the team. And I said, you know what, you know what this is? And I'm holding this plant up. And I, you know what you do to these? You know, right? And <laughs> Matt got so fired up, he knocked it out of my hands. Mud and flour went everywhere in players' faces, and and he he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I went, yeah, and he and the team just went crazy. Sure, and that was it. They went out and just Put, took care of business. Took, pounded the purple yeah, pansies. I was going to throw that thing against the wall to get him fired up. I didn't need to. Matt did it for well, me. You'd already told Nettie it wasn't yeah, coming home. So right. regardless of how it took its so, hit. So I've it's told that story a thousand times. In fact, I relived it with Matt the other uh, day on I'm the phone. That. But uh, good stuff. Yeah, you and your reunion. Let me share a quick one with you. So, so yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm here. This had to be early 80s. And as I shared, I think in our open, we've not heard it, but I, I'm pretty sure that I know that Matt Richardson, the director of the television station here, 36 years now, MCTV has been doing business out of the uh, H.H. Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. 
it's had some different settings there, and its newest home is certainly spectacular, but it used to be at the other end behind the theater. But anyway, early 80s, and it was, uh, I'm pretty convinced, a Dow Midland game. I was doing radio at the time at uh, WMPX, news and sports director there, and I'd also been doing TV at MCTV volunteering. In the early days when Altimore was on this side of the field and Joe Swack was visiting and when Joe Swack was over here and it would be 5,000 people here at these games and we were doing TV in addition to radio. But I can remember a single camera, no, do it again, two cameras on top of the old press box here at, at uh, wasn't the Midland Community Stadium, it was Midland High Stadium because Dow was still playing over at Dow. Dow, yeah. yeah. Two cameras on a stick. One was kind of a medium shot that panned left, panned right. The other camera was a zoom in, zoom out. We had a hardwired mic set in front of us, three headsets, didn't have a preview monitor. We were just we just knew we were doing TV. And so they'd put it in the can off two cameras and they'd have a switcher behind us and put it on tape, right? Then we'd uh, we'd go and they uh, put it back in the station queue so it'd come on TV. By the time we finished down at uh, having a bully burger and watching the game, we'd go down there as volunteers, and it was a two-camera shoot, and it, we had the most fun building this thing to what it is. And today, what's cool is, you know, almost 35 years later, today we're making... Uh, milestones as well. We're live streaming this. We're on down at Dow Diamond live. It's live on television. We've been doing podcasts and so forth, and they're building that frontier where for what MCTV yeah, has awesome. planned in the future. Very fortune. cool. And it started literally with a camera on a stick, and now we've got four cameras, instant replay, fantastic graphics, fantastic staff, and just watching MCTV become what it has meant not just in sports but to this community in a it's fantastic a, community well yeah. one one equals the other right one makes the other so well listen that's enough talking for now i've got to get a drink of water plus we've got uh what do we got 3 30 left on the clock yeah so we're going to be back uh give us a couple minutes guys and uh we'll give you your break and then i think we have some video highlight from that first uh, half yeah, to review sounds good back to the trailer we'll be right back With the MCTV Network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or... I don't recall the exact details of getting involved, but I know that it was, uh, I had an interest in television. I had an interest in producing programs and commu uh, Midland Community Television was a perfect outlet for that and has been for the last 30 years, a way for somebody to uh, become involved with the production of television programs and, and saying what you want to say, showing what you want to show with very few limits on it and then having that actually be uh, produced and sent out to the community at large. Looking for a new hobby? How would you like to create your own television show? Call Midland Community Television at 837-3474 to sign up for our next orientation studio workshop. You will learn how to use a studio camera, learn how to edit on a computer, or even be the host of your very own TV show. 
Don't wait. Sign up today. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to sign up. Midland Community Television, your community voice. Your local public access facility gives you the opportunity to engage your community with your own television show. The content on our Community Voices channel ranges from talk shows, variety hours, and nonprofit informational specials. With the power of video continuing to gain steam, there's no better facility to produce your own content. Check out the City of Midland website or give us a call for more information. The sooner you do, the sooner you can make your own show. Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV, Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user. Well, I can only imagine the benefit to the community is through what you hear on the streets as far as did you see or there was information that I didn't know about. It would be Midland County Cancer Services or uh, the police department or city hall meetings, uh, commission meetings. And so it's the news of the community on television. Midland only has one television station. MCTV is the station for Midland. The MCTV network helps Midland residents share their story with the community. Our media producer workshops will help you get started. In one short session, you will learn how to create media that will educate, entertain, and enrich the community in which we live. Get registered for a workshop by calling 837-3474, follow us on Facebook for more information, and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube and your podcast platform for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Hi, and welcome back, everybody. It's second half action from Midland Community Stadium. The Dow Chargers hosting the Saginaw High Trojans. And uh, not being kind to the traveling Trojans are these Dow High Chargers, but they are firing on each and every cylinder for the first 24 minutes, Coach Violet. And 37-0 uh, is our halftime score. And they have certainly earned every minute of that and not spent 
a bad possession or a bad uh, series in defense to keep the pressure on these no, Saginaw and, Trojans. And the struggle is, you know, tonight you're playing an opponent that's struggling, right? Right. And you need to stay focused because you don't you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to come complacent. And we'll see how they uh, handle the second half. The kick is away. Bounces at the twenty. Fielded and misfielded, and then fielded again at about the 26-yard line. Out over the 10, back to the 12. It ends up being a good kick on the part of the Trojans. Yeah, Carter Coates had a hard time right. picking that ball up. It was spinning like crazy, and he finally got his hands on it and got some positive yards out of it. Well, it's better than being inside the 5, or at the 5, where he handled it first. He did pick up about a 7, 8-yard return once he found the handle on that rascal, but that's where... Jack Backus, and be a nice time to have stats, and I, I, I didn't bring a proper writing pencil to do that, but uh, <laughs> Jack Backus was just phenomenal in, in the first half. He was. I can't recall too many incompletions, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> he was pretty on the money all the first half. He's got a pair of halfbacks side by side. He's bookend in the backfield. Two to his left, one to his right for his receivers. Handoff on the ground over the left side of that offensive line. And that was that was one of the things that Coach wanted to work on was the communication, pre-snap communication. And obviously something went wrong there. The ball was on the ground, had to be picked up, and then the play fell apart. Aiden Wardell ends up cleaning up the mess and actually picking up a couple of yards. It's, we'll call it a second in a, in a short eight from their own 15. From the shotgun, handoff. That is red and stopped right in the backfield. Nowhere to go for the Charger running back. Boy, it sure was. There was. Uh, they were all over that play. I don't know what happened up front with the blocking scheme, but uh, two Saginaw defenders were there, and the running back had nowhere to go. Looking for us. I, I believe that was Mitchell Sockless. So Jack Backus has come out. He's on the sideline now for this third down play. I believe that's Dawson Studebaker. He's the backup quarterback. I think he is in there taking this possession or this, this third down this play. Snap. And it's about timing. Maybe we saw it there. Yeah, I'm trying to pull the number. That oh, is number five. Hasselin. Yeah. Hasselin. Was calling the signals. Haslin meets on the sideline with the offense corner. He's back in. So Wyatt Haslin will return to get some time, some snaps. Certainly don't believe it was an well, issue at all with, uh, with Backus. Seems to be engaged. Haslin showed it, kept it. And nowhere to go. That's that's a loss. Yeah, that was uh, that was an odd series there. I'm not sure what happened, uh, what they were trying, um, but it was a uh, there was some miscommunication for sure. Is this something that Coach Peterson has the ability to do uh, at this point of this game? Uh, up 37, a continuous clock, by the way. Yeah, sure. Only being stopped for. Injuries, uh, even during the timeouts, the continuous clock will run based on the score of 35 has been reached. The punt is away, bounces at the 23, and takes a Saginaw bounce back towards the 20 before it's downed. There by Daniel Kowalczyk. So Trojans with great field possession on, pos position on their first possession here in the second half. High school rule is if uh, the score gets to be 35 or more, it becomes a continuous clock. And that is... Uh, we are in with, that situation the, now. Yep. With the exclusion, I believe, I think 50 is the mark we talked about. Then it even continues to run for timeouts if there's a 50% differential margin between the two teams. But right now, it runs even on penalties or an injury to a player. 
Atkins still in for Saginaw. He throws and it's picked on the far side. Forced out of bounds, but not until he came away with an offensive possession for the Chargers, Carter Coutts. Boy, we're calling his name a lot today, aren't we? If he's not he in all the end the zone place. with him, he's picking him defensively. Coates effective on both sides of the football. And, and what, what caused that was the tremendous pressure. You'll see tremendous pressure here. On Atkins. Yep, they're all coming after him, and he kind of throws up a, a, a wobblier, and a Coates was able to get over there and get underneath of it, and obviously... Make a great interception. Nicely done. Nicely done for Coates. Just a junior. Pressure again. Read it like a book, and back goes Aiden Hunt. Yeah, that's uh, and, and and Coach may be taking time to get a lot of fresh bodies in there right now, especially on that offensive line. Yeah, that was a quick stop, wasn't it? Yeah, they're just just the line of scrimmage. Right now, Saginaw owns the line of scrimmage, and Dow can't do anything with that line of scrimmage. Hasselhun still in with the call, the senior. Lone set back, two split to his right, one to his left. Hasselhun to keep it, and the defense wraps him up and takes him down. We are in the third quarter. It is a continuous clock. The clock you see along the bottom band, that's time remaining in the third quarter. Yep, right one, down the line with the replay, again, Richie. Here's the line of scrimmage, and you'll see that they're three yards back in behind the line of scrimmage. So Saginaw right now is firing off the ball. They know that Dow's probably going to just run the ball at this point, take some time off the clock. Hasselhunt. Two to his right, two to his left. He's going to keep it. Had the pitch option. Chose not to go with it. Had a waiting arms of Mitchell Skolas out there and chose to keep it himself. That'll bring up a third down. Do it again. Yard marker changes fourth and with the losses. Fourth and 19 on the 19, on the 14 actually. Got to quit reading the scoreboard, Richie, and come right to the field. Yeah, and and I don't think this is uh, Dawson Studebaker in their punting either. He's nor he's their normal punter. Right. I think this is a uh, number it's, ten. That's, that's Hayden, Hayden Heatherton. He's their kicker. Yep. Wrapped up this time out near the twenty-nine yard line, following following the Heatherington punt. Well, we sure missed the band, the marching band at halftime. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty typical. I, I think I like the energy that brings to these high school uh, oh, for sure. yeah. events as well. I mean, that's, that's energy in and amongst itself. And it doesn't matter which of our performing county bands are performing. That's, uh, that, too, is one of my favorites when they get this place rocking. Some phenomenal band programs. And, Throughout uh, the Midland County area, I think every school can can claim victory in that for our kids. Delay of game is going to be called on the Trojans. Atkins didn't get it off in time. Play clock will be started. As will, of course, the game clock. Why is the game? Did it stop on a penalty? It looked like it stopped. Stopped on a penalty, then restarted. Atkins, handoff to number nine. Still don't have his name for you. He's a slippery little back, though. Boy, yes, he was he running is. hard. Dow's defense was stretching out the play, making it difficult for him, but he was he was grinding. I see Joanne Peterson down there sitting in the stands. I haven't seen Joanne in quite a while. I want to throw a shout out to her. She raised a great family. Yeah, it sure has. 
she's not done. Matt and his wife with a uh, brand new yeah, car, uh, daughter, month old, yeah. Olivia. Yeah, closing in on a year old. Congratulations. How about that? You two. I guess it's you three now in that Peterson household, isn't it? I believe it? Matt's brother has a couple of uh, daughters as well. So, yeah. yeah. Matt and his wife, Rachel, Olivia, coming up on a full year of happening. Things are good. Atkins from the shotgun. Two to his left, oh. one to his right. He's going to keep it. He's going to roll. Pursuit comes on the part of the H.E. style. A little flip pass. <laughs> yeah, they'll consider it a forward pass as incomplete. But I want to tell you about some pursuit going down right there. Xavier St. John. Well, and that's after Aiden um, Wardell got... Uh, Put the heat. Got mugged. Him. Yeah. Yeah, he almost had his shirt taken off of him. You'll see him right here. And then he's going to pursue. And look at the hold going on there. And here comes St. John. And here comes St. John to take care of it. And then he just flips it forward. And he's lucky he didn't get intercepted. Sure is. There's that hungry pursuit we've talked about, Dow. On both sides of the football, they just seem like they want to take this game's control and the pace and uh, the momentum on, on every snap of the ball. I'm, I'm excited to see their energy. Yeah, they haven't, lost a, they haven't lost a beat in the second half on the defensive side of the nope. ball. Coach P will be a little upset about the execution so far on the offensive side of the ball for sure. That's what he's here to work on, right? That's right. Atkins shows it once, brings it down, pops it again. It's complete. That pass complete for a small gain to Dylan Moore. Moore picks up about three yards. It'll bring up third down. And Evan, Evan we'll Karnowski come 15. up and made a very good play. Very sound tackle on that play. Clock runs now a minute 42 here in the third quarter. That's a lazy long punt on a on a third, trying to gain it some back, and it'll come to rest inside the 15 at about the 14, where the Chargers will take over. Which it surprises me why they would even punt in that situation. I know it was fourth and, and very long, but you're you're already down in the the side of the field. That what's it matter, right? Right. So here's the punt. He's going to roll out this way. He's going to punt the ball. The ball is at the 35-yard line. Again, uh, wondering why they would even worry about punting in that situation. Right. Back us back in at quarterback for the Chargers, the sophomore starter. Back us. He'll use the pitch to the right. It's going to come around the edge at the 20, 25, 30. Out over the 30 to about the 35, all down by a couple of defenders, but not before. He does some good damage. Number 51, your Colin Deal on the carry. So you can tell they're working on stuff. They threw a little option in there. You know, either quarterback can keep it or he can pitch it. Here's Here he is. It. He's rolling out. 23 is all over him. He pitches the ball, and they make a big gain out of this play. Nice, uh, nice read by Bacchus. My, uh, my mistake, my bad. It was Mitchell Skoklas. Inside trap, nice play. Nobody's seen it. Bang. Aiden Wardell, big gain on the carry. Pulling two guards, guard tackle on that. Inside handoff to Warden, or Aiden Warden, <laughs> Aiden Wardell. I knew, I knew exactly yeah, who you were talking back about on as the ball. third and, uh, quarter comes to a close. That's a key play. Uh, Matt tells me to look for that quite often this year. They're, they execute that well. And they fake it well. So yeah, this time it got him in here it the, is. Uh, Trojan territory. Coming back this way. Very nicely done. Wardell on the keep. And that's where Dow will start the fourth quarter. They'll just head the other way with it. A nice quarter. Scoreless for either team. A quiet, scoreless quarter. So they call that a GT counter. Great times. Guard and tackle. Ah, oh, there it is. Pulling. It was an acronym for something. Guard and tackle are pulling on that way, and it's an inside trap. 
The coverage of this H.H. Dow High School football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. So if you'd like to help create games like this one, you can do it. Sign up for our media creator workshops. You can learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your own video on professional software. Learn how you can make that creation, and you can bring it into life and make it into a podcast or on video or on YouTube. Here's a number for you if you'd like to learn more. It's 837-3474. That number again is 837-3474. If you'd like some more information about MCTV, you can find it at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov forward slash. That's not the one that goes backwards. That goes forward. So you go forward MCTV. You can get it and learn about some of our workshops and having done this hobby for about 35 years at MCTV I would highly recommend it if you find anybody who's producing or volunteering running cameras doing sound switching there's not one of them who volunteered over the 36 plus years of MCTV's existence that'll tell you it wasn't worth it and it's a gosh darn blast it is a blast a lot I'm of fun you good people it's what community television is all about, and we do it well in Midland, Michigan. I'll tell you that right now. Under center, a new quarterback, number 32 this round, is Landon Miller. Miller's pitch goes out to the weak side, seems some extra Zach new Parker, names in extra yep, places. Zach Parker took the pitch on the outside. I think it was Zach Parker. Yep, I think you're right. Number eight yep. was the ball carrier, number 32. Landon is just a sophomore, Landon Miller, listed as a QB. He also plays some linebacker. 5'11 at 175 pounds is Mr. Miller, the current Chaja QB. And there was some laundry on that play, so they got him for, I think, a horse collar tackle. I'm not quite sure. Maybe not. Maybe they picked up the flag. It was a horse collar tackle. Back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth quarter. Ooh. Oh, hello. Let me introduce myself. <laughs> uh, number 61. I don't even have him on the roster. No, 67. 61, Jamil Wilson. He come up and he put a lick on the running back. And it's a penalty and, against Saginaw. And we'll again. see it here on the replay. Oh. Nobody, Hi. nobody, <laughs> oh, I mean God. nobody, blocked him, and he just put a lick on the back. You know, I should probably fess up right now. I went to TK on Wednesday of this week, and my eyes have changed. <laughs> That's a true story. I got some new lenses coming, but they will not be here for another week and a half. So, boy, I could have used them, TK. I know he's watching tonight. He got a vested interest in this Charger program on the ice and on the gridiron. Here it is, going to go around the right edge, and that's uh, Miller on the keep. And it almost Again. looked like a broken play. Yeah. Uh, it looked like it was supposed to be an option, and Miller turned it, it into a positive Turned it game. into a positive, and, and who he was supposed to option it to turned around and actually blocked to help him get the edge. That's creative football right there. <laughs> no, you take it. No, I'll take it. Okay, I'll block for you. Yeah. Here it is again. So he's going this way. You can see right here, number eight, actually That's Zach Parker. Parker, I think, was supposed to get the option on that. And uh, same two in the backfield. He turned and blocked. Parker and Miller. Oops. Hard cadence draws the defense off. Were they drawn? Let us see. It is an offsides on the Saginaw High Trojans. Yeah, you can see number 74 go, oh, shucks. I got caught. You're that big and you're that far into the offensive line and offensive backfield. It ain't about getting <laughs> caught. Here it is again. Yeah, it's more than I'm caught. It's right here. The yeah. Hard count. Yeah. Yep. And he holds his hands up and he goes, oh, they got me. <laughs> My bad. He's pointing to himself. My bad. It does move the sticks. First and 10 from the 20 of Saginaw is the Chargers with the football moving right to left. Snap mishandled. 
Miller gathers it and falls on it. It'll be a loss of five, second and 15. I'm just not sure what's going on with that play because all the offensive linemen took off. They allowed the Saginaw D line to come through, so it looks to me like it should have been a screen. Right. But then if that's the case, it's nowhere near developing. That's right. By the time the that's defense right. gets there. So coaches will have something to work on this week for sure. Using all the play clock because it's a continuous clock on the game clock. Dow breaks the huddle with five, four, three left on the play clock. And I don't think they're going to get it no, off. They Delay didn't get game. it off. That whistle does stop the game clock to march off the penalty. I believe once the ball is placed at the new line of scrimmage, which will be the 30, that game clock will start again. And it does, as does the play clock, the 25-second play clock. Boy, nothing like Friday night, Dale. Under the lights, beautiful, beautiful night. My first time in the new press box here at yep, my too. Community Stadium. Oh, it's a quick pitch. Coming right back by him. Miller gets it off by the man in motion, number 85, was Austin Benchley, the sophomore. Getting a lot of sophomores, getting some playing time here. Here's the replay. That, too, was a bit broken, but they made positive yardage mm -hmm. from it. Isn't that kind of what it's about for these young guys as well? Sure. Miller will bring him back to the line. Landon Miller, the quarterback on this series, from the shotgun. Sets doesn't again. have any time. Had to get rid of it quickly. Well, Intended receiver was number 80, Anthony Coleman. It's incomplete. Once again, they were setting up that screen play, so that they're just allowing them linemen to come too fast, and it doesn't allow the you know the play to develop. To the play to develop, right? And that was some pressure on Miller right there again. I mean, yep. he's he's <laughs> not what uh, Bacchus is at 6'5". Miller goes 5'11", and those linemen not only are they are broad and big, but they're taller. And so he still had linemen with hands in the air to try and to get over And he almost that got screen. that ball to Coleman, yeah. And, got a hand and on it. Had he done that, that, that screen was wide open. That inside screen was wide open. Well, we're going to get a timeout called by somebody. I didn't see the uh, that, but I would need to tell you, you know, 2020 is going to eventually be over, and boy, won't that be nice. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. We'll be right in 2021 here in just a few months. I don't want to wish it away, but let me tell you, MCDV, and we are excited to announce to you that coming in January of 2021, the MCTV network will be streaming on Roku, on Apple TV, on Fire Stick, and mobile devices everywhere. I'm just telling you, enjoy community events, government meetings, local sports, concerts, and more wherever you are and wherever you go, whatever you want. MCTV's feed it to it. Now, Rich, I'm going to stop this promo right here because wow. this right here is about a 46-yard field goal yard attempt. Field goal. That's heavy. 46. Thing. Height is going to be about four yards shy of the uh, distance it needed. So, Tucker Pomeranke, do it again. Was that Caden Krentz? He was the holder. Usually Pomeranke is the uh, Play snapper, yeah. and um, the long snapper is definitely Pomeranke normally, but it was Hetherington, right? The yeah, kicker. number 10, yep. And I'm not sure who was, who was the holder. I think it was Kritz, number three, but I don't know. So, yeah, let me tell you. So the missed field goal from 46 yards out is no good, so our score remains 37-0. Time on the clock. That's the fourth quarter clock. But I like that because you know what? Later in the season, they're going to know. He's going okay. to have a 42-yarder. They're going to say. Coach Peterson's going to throw him out there and say, you know, you kicked a 42-yarder against Saginaw. Right. We just happened to be 46 right. away. So that will make his decision later in you the bet. year for a game winner at some you point. Bet. And how important is game situation? I mean, we talk about. 
teams get tired of playing themselves through summer and in right. fall and the two a days and all that. These guys haven't had a lot of chance to do that, but right now they've got opposition on the other side of the football. They don't see every day in heaven for the last That's two right. weeks, right? That's right. So it's game situation. It is game situation. Well, and not even seeing film on these guys. And, and last week they didn't see film on Central, and they come into that game. Yeah. And, and we're able to adapt and play a very in good game, football game. In-game adjustments, really. Right. right. An empty backfield for Atkins, the quarterback from Saginaw. Again, a float and snap. Overthrown, almost picked, and then almost picked again. First shot at it was number four, <laughs> Tucker Pomeranke. Second shot at it, I think, was number 11. That would have been Brandon Scott. Two Chargers. Yeah, I'm thinking it was, uh, I'm thinking uh, Zach Parker was out there in that play too. But regardless, two guys had a great opportunity to make an interception. Atkins looks right, throws right. Incomplete pass intended there to number 88 is Devon Cherry. A little low. It's going to be a shoe, shoestring grab if he could have come up with that. Was that? You know, I thought it'd help if I went with bifocals, but I find out I'm watching everything through the bottom of my classes now. I can't see out of the room. Hey, it's our first game too, right? That's so. right. Here we go. I do know there's a football game going on, and there's 529 on the clock. Atkins lost one, looking running oh. right underneath it. 20, 15, 10, 5, 4. Touchdown, Kareem McCune. That right there is an 80-yard touchdown strike Atkins to McCune. And McCune just does a straight fly route, and he gets behind Brandon Scott. and uh, Outran him. Huh? And they outran him. And he outran him. Yep. And he... Nope, oh, right here. Bang. Yep, and that's... Your safety coming over. Yep, and he just... He allowed him to get behind and him. And the corner was consumed by the other receiver who drew him off and didn't allow double coverage on the deep man. And that's when Atkins hit McEwen on the fly. And an 80-yard touchdown strike for the Trojans. Well, that'll close the margin. It is 37-6, awaiting the extra point to be kicked on the part of Saginaw High. They're going to go for two. Snap is high. Atkins goes up and knocks it down, but he won't get in. So it'll be a 31-point differential between the scores. So we are back to a non-continuous clock with 5 minutes and 16 seconds to play here in this, this contest. Atkins did a nice job throwing that ball up and getting it. I mean, he made a nice throw. He hit him right in stride, and McCune was able to get behind a defender, and that was that. And as importantly, he had time to let that play develop and have McCune get as far into the defensive secondary as he did, and he really released it at the same time. McEwen beat the defender uh -oh. about the time that Atkins got rid of the football. And that tells you we didn't get pressure on the D-line to the quarterback right. because if he had that much time to throw that pattern. Yeah, because McEwen was already at about the 40-45, the line. He was 25 yards downfield, right. so Atkins had that kind of time to let to let the play develop. Well, do you think we're looking for an, from an onside perspective for this one for Saginaw? I mean, it's, it's out of reach, but I think there's still some things for both sides of this uh, football line of scrimmage that these teams are going to work on with five to play. You're still working out the early season bugs in game two, right? Yep, yep. They're trying to get all 11 guys on the field right now. Yeah, it looks like they might try some kind of, well, no, they weren't lined up right, so. They're going to kick away. Nope, they're going to onside it, and they're going to get it. Bounced off the face mask, and Saginaw will own it on their own 47-yard line. Onside kick is successful. Wow. 
And Saginaw now with 5 minutes 13 seconds to play. The clock is no longer continuous. Here's the onside coach. Yeah, you'll see he'll come up right here. He'll hit the defender right in the face mask, unfortunately. And it bounces right back to number 11. And uh, Deontay Carter jumps on it for Saginaw High. Having missed the two-point conversion, they trail it by 31. They, the Saginaw High Trojans, the Chargers, having won a week ago over in Bay City against the Central Wolves, are now home. And we're going to get something marched off. It's a penalty. Well, we had 12 men on the field for one thing, and we had to get somebody off the field, so I'm guessing that's what the penalty was for, and he marched okay, off too five. Many men. All right. It's first and five now inside of Charger territory for the Trojans. Ball resting on the 48-yard line of H.H. Dow. Atkins throws back across his body and the flow of traffic. It falls incomplete. Good defense played there and, by Brandon Scott. And pressure that time on Atkins. He couldn't bit. set his feet. He had to be quicker release and, and thus an incomplete pass. Again, we are stopping the clock on incomplete passes now. Just under five to play here in the fourth quarter. Next week, the Chargers are taking on the Heritage Hawks. Oh, <laughs> nearly picked. Outstretched arms and couldn't get it tucked in anymore. Christian Whitehead for the Chargers. Yeah, they were trying to go to McCoon. Here they're trying to go to McCoon again. Atkins is trying to go to McCoon. Okay, and the defender comes back on the ball. And it's under throw. Right here, and then he gets grabbed by the back of the jersey. <laughs> Say, no, that should be for me. <laughs> and the official the, the, was right there, but he wasn't going to throw a flag. You're right. You're right. Atkins. Two to his right, one to his left. He's going to go left. He's going to throw it up again, looking for a receiver to run under it. He and a defender run under it, and it's defended well there by number eight, and that's Zach Parker. Yeah, again, the equal opportunity. They had pressure. The Dow, Dow, Dow had pressure on the outside and in Atkins' face, and all he could do is throw it straight up in the air. He had nothing on that ball. Incomplete pass stops that clock. 445. It is fourth down, fourth and five. It was first and five in three plays. The Trojans have not moved the football. So they're going to go on fourth down, of course. That's picked in and around the 30 yard line. At the 40, 45 on the return, and a nice play and a good set of hands. Zach Parker has been sniffing one of those out this entire series, yep, and he, he finally sure comes home with one, doesn't he? Yep. Nice play by Parker. Again, pressure on Atkins. He can't get a good throw off. And a good return following the pick. So here you got your DNs putting a lot of pressure on Atkins. He throws an underneath ball. There is Zach to intercept the ball. Great job. Good elevation, good jump. Went straight up for the football, came down with it, and still picked up some yards. Another hard cadence. That'll draw the defense off the mark. Another quarterback in, and I am seeing... I'm going to look at the TV monitor because I'm not sure what I'm saying anymore out of these. <laughs> All right, yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. I just didn't want to be wrong a whole bunch of times in the same quarter. <laughs> Landon Miller in on this series as well. Miller, the young sophomore, is 
Had a couple of reps the last few possessions. And he's at it again. Following the penalty, it's first and five. Whistles stop and blow it again. No play allowed to occur. I didn't do it. <laughs> What'd you hit, Richie? You can still describe. They've not marched the football in a direction yet. It remains first and ten. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> Back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second and ten. And Miller went over the right edge with that. Looks like Richie minimized our... No. Telestrator, let's see if we can... It just went... Did it? Yeah. So we've lost our replay video on our... In our telestrator. That was a pretty yellow you picked out, though. <laughs> so still up here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we lost video on our straighter. Kind of looked like a dance move, actually. He was trying to stay that onside. whistle blew. <laughs> you cannot try to stay onside any harder than that young fella did right there. The Keith DN. Ware, the defensive end for Saginaw High, just uh, trying to stay away from the neutral Here zone. Here it is. Uh, wind blows. Oh, man. <laughs> Hike the ball, he says. Nope. He was so close. Miller, three-step drop. Looks for that cross again. And it is intercepted. intercepted. Intended receiver. It's the same play that got broke up last time. Anthony Coleman, the intended receiver for the Chargers. Overthrown by Miller. And this time a pair of defenders were standing there. And Saginaw comes away with it. Yeah, they, they like going back to that screen play. And, and um, he threw the ball high. And... That leads to interceptions. It does. Here it is. Miller back with the ball. Receiver goes out, then comes in. Number 80. The ball is high. He tips it. Goes into the hands of the Saginaw DB. And that was uh, actually Dylan Moore comes with the pick. Atkins keeps it himself. 45-50. Turns it up to the Dow 45. A first down. And sometimes you can get over aggressive here as your defensive end or yeah. if you're blitzing from the outside. Number 51 is in there, and that's Colin Deal. And he overran the play. Now, you're supposed to take outside leverage with your defender and not allow, okay, not allow that to happen, not allow that quarterback to get free like that. And here, in all fairness. Here on the replay, you'll see this. He come in, see how he right overrun there. the play yep. right there. He should have had Turned inside in. leverage with that defender and turn that play in. Back to the action. Actions, a high snap. He does control it, but he's got nowhere to go. Three, four Dow defenders there to bust that one up. Led primarily by Brendan Datsik. A lot of teaching points, though. I see a lot of things Absolutely. that uh, coaches can teach to after this game tonight. Well, and there's not only a lot to teach, but everybody's had a bit of a lesson. I think that uh, Coach Peterson and his staff have worked real hard to get everybody some PT in this one. Sure. And yep. So everybody has some experience in the win, for sure. It's underthrown, a collision. One, two Trojans don't get up. Half of the Dow player is now fully up. And that was a lot of bodies in one place looking for one ball. Five players, three defenders, and two offenders all looking for the same pot of gold on the end of that Atkins pass. <laughs> Here it is. Yep. 
Brandon Scott back there defending. Christian Whitehead defending. Zach Parker defending. All three of them are back there. And uh, they're all going for the ball. Same ball. Atkins. Oh, my. He's hit on the shotgun. Let's see. Looks like 67 for the Trovans. Trojans fell on it. I say 67. Richie, what number is that? <laughs> oh, mercy. It is Saginaw ball, but it's a huge loss following the high snap and the fumble. Over Atkins' head. He mishandles it, and then watch. Pow. And then 57 comes up with it. That's Demetlo Borio. Yeah, 32. That was Landon Miller coming into that linebacker Was it position. really? Yeah. So he goes from quarterback to linebacker. linebacker, and he comes in on a delayed blitz, and he nobody touched him. No. And he put a lick in on that. You know, that's kind of interesting, especially at the high school level. So you got a, you got a young kid who's on the offensive side of the ball, and he's involved in the offense, let's say, not on the line, because those guys are just hammering each other every time anyway. But so you're an offensive player, you're running back, wide receiver, quarterback, and the defense has just pummeled you on a couple where you haven't got your, your line to assist. All of a sudden, you're on the other side of the ball. You go equal the task because now you're the defender. You go put a lick. At, does right. it all even out at the end it of the night, coach, if it they're does. going both ways? You know what? When you're an athlete, you're an athlete, yep. right? Yep, and yep. And you just, yep, it's, uh, it does all even out at the end of the night. Well, you've got bruises from getting hit, and then you might have a couple from hit. And and some will say, well, well you know, why do you got your backup quarterback in there, or why does he play linebacker? Why is he in this position? Right. You know, you got to let thoroughbreds run. Sure. You know, let them play. <sighs> Clock now nearing a minute remaining in this one. Dow, as it's had from the very beginning, as it scored 14 in the fourth, first quarter. 17 in the second quarter, a scoreless third quarter. And now yet a scoreless with the exception of the Trojan touchdown, the 80-yard strike. It's funny, I was watching Landon Miller again and out of that linebacker position, and I know it's a punt. Right. But he was he, smelling blood again. He, he was like, I want to go one. again. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's going to get his chance now, except he knows he's going to get his hands on the football because he's coming back in to general this drive with... <laughs> 57 seconds to play. <coughs> Fourth and final quarter from Midland Community Stadium. And what's important, it's coming from Midland Community Stadium. High school sports are back. All the fall sports that have shortened seasons, the winter sports uh, will begin practicing uh, here shortly. Everybody's following all the... COVID caution rules in high schools and our society, and it's making things like this possible. This is just fantastic. It really is. Great decision by the state of Michigan's High School Athletic Association yeah, for to, sure. to put this back together for these young people. You know, we realize that they're students, but those that claim themselves to be student athletes are both of those things, and it is about academics, but you can learn as much as an athlete on the playing surface as what you can in the classroom and, and apply it in the same direction. So Well, and, and one of the things I was so proud of, of Matt Peterson in his playing days and in his high school days is his maturity level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he matured. Yeah. And I watched him mature, and now I see him as a young man with a family and coaching this. And now you see him with two wins yeah. as a head coach. And he's talking about maturity of his players. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. Well, they, they go to him and thank him and out of respect and uh, appreciation of what is. The H.H. Dow team stands on their sideline, lifts their helmets high. Saginaw High on the visiting side of Midland Community Stadium does the same where they used to walk the 50 and chest bump and high five and knuckle up. The coaches meet at midfield. Coach Wyatt and Coach Peterson. Wyatt in his second year at Saginaw High. Matt in his first year at Dow High, Coach Peterson. And it was what most expected. However, there, there was a lot of scoring early, Rich. No scoring in the third quarter, and only one scoring. The second half changed, but so did personnel, certainly, right. on the side of the offense. They, Dow High was 
working on a lot of things in that second half, and they have a lot of different personnel in there that wasn't getting probably yep. a lot of snaps in practice. Well, we do have highlights with uh, 37 points scored on behalf of these Chargers and six on behalf of these Trojans. We got as a highlight reel, Rich, and we're going to test your memory. Likely the first touchdown. Atkins. Completed to set us up for then this touchdown. This is the rollout. Yeah, back throws. Touchdown. All he throws a bullet into the corner. Yep. To that Mitchell. Too, like us. Like, yep. The second score, that made it 7-0. All first quarter okay. scoring here. And we called Carter Coates' name quite a bit. That was his first his one. Game. Yep. Atkins. Stopped him, dropped him. A good, good hustle right there by number nine. Boy, we should have been able to get that kid's name from somewhere. Saginaw defense showed itself certainly throughout the first half even though giving up 37 points I felt mm -hmm. and there's Dow's D there's there's Aiden Wardell there's yep. there's Dawson Studebaker just flying to the ball yep. Jason Labby also in on that yep this Here's is the, the safety. safety and it, that play just took too long to develop and, and boy you know Daniel Kowalczyk did a great job Studebaker in on that as well here was a cool play by Kritz once again, that inside screen, and then Critch just did the rest. That's what they tried to use multiple times. Certainly successful on this, and had some failures on it in the third and fourth Well, I can see why I'd want to get those kids in open field. They you got bet. some talent. Boom. Boom. Who else? Nice place to Studebaker. Baker. Yep. This was another nice. Who, who was that? Oh, yeah, number two, Studebaker. Studebaker. And they didn't score on that play. It ended up being an incomplete pass, Correct. as it should have been. And here's Backus throwing it down the middle. Tight end going up big to get that ball. This is the touchdown. We talked about what he allowed yeah, that to happen. And once again, Coates on the reception on a quarter route, corner route. Excuse me. And talking about getting behind the Over defense. There. Yeah, Tucker Pomeranke doing ranking. a good job. Pick. Intercept him by Coates. Both sides of the football. Yep. Coach had a great game today. There he is again. Nope, that's not. That's hate. That's Aiden Mordell on that right GT That was a big play at the counter. time. Yep. That's that yep, same, that's play, the from, same play from another camera. Yep. Good job, guys, by the way, to our volunteer and our staff. Look at two hands on the ball. Look at that. Outstanding running and then by he runs Hayden. right at the defender. Yeah, Doesn't try that. to avoid him. Just yep. chins up on him. Here's the 80-yard pass. That's McCoon. He got behind the defense, and Atkins threw a great pass to him, and that was Saginaw's only score. Yeah. Here's the pick. Yep, there it is again from a different camera angle. And he just then... Outruns the defender. He had him by a step and a half by the time he got the football. You're just coming right at you for McEwen. Yeah, great pass. And it shows you that's about a four-yard difference between he and the two defenders mm -hmm. after he came up with the football. Well, Coach ain't going right to like there. to see this ten times. <laughs> that's from every camera we had on site here at at the high school. Here's the and outside kit. Successful. I called that, Richie, by Yes, you did call that. Unfortunately, hit Boom. our defender right in the face mask, and it took that bounce at the last <laughs> second. Which it does. And, you know, I think that was Tucker Pomeranke, but I, I don't know for sure. But, I yeah, I think it was, yeah, number it was. four. So and, he's, uh, you got a hands guy up there. Yep, you do. There and was the and there was the... There was the screen again, uh, going to it one too many times, threw it high. Well, I think that uh, the Dow High program, you know, they were ranked in the top uh, 75 in the state coming in here. They came in at 1-0 uh, into the uh, Saginaw Valley Red Division. And uh, tonight's win will certainly help them out. And uh, uh, they are now ramping up for, for what lies next on their docket, so October 2nd, they, uh, they'll be on the road, and they over at, uh, that'll be interesting to see Coach Peterson over at his own the hang. The old Heritage Hawks. Yeah, yeah. over at the Hawksville, yeah. where he was at uh, up until this year when he 
he was there for a couple of years coaching for the Hawks and, and so he's going to be he's going to be in two venues that he's kind of felt home in, in the last uh, in the last couple of years for sure yeah. how is that as a coach uh, and not that you got back over to the Tum as a head coach with your Creek football team but uh, there are you play you play well at home, but do you find that there are some yards that are not home that you have some good success in coach? Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. There's there's some there's some stadiums, there's some areas that you just you wanna play well at. Sure. There's rivalries, there's there's memories, sure. Yep. And the Saginaw Valley League is that, regardless of what division you cut them in. I mean you still got, you know, the red and the blues, but sure. You've got the, the Flint schools, uh who are playing amongst themselves really until playoff time. You've got uh, the Mid Michigan schools, the Saginaw, and Bay City Midlands that are still playing each other and have for, for decades. So that, those rivalries exist regardless of the record. You throw them out, right? These kind of things. So I guess that uh, you're not a rookie anymore in television. No, I guess not. You've done it. How about that? Take this off your bucket <laughs> list, pal. And, uh, it's been fun, Dale. It has. It uh, has. As always, my friend, it's uh, fun sitting in the booth with you on Friday night and also Saturday. Saturdays, yeah. yeah. Well, next spring maybe we get some wood football under our belt if yeah. uh, the GLIAC can get all that figured. It's kind of nice to see D1s coming back at it a right. little bit and having those right. discussions. But uh, it will return. Whatever the next normal is, uh, we will see that. I, I believe that to be true. It would be better because of it because we've learned a lot of things in the last seven or eight months. So. Our prayers and good thoughts continue to go out to the Midland community. We had, uh, you know, the 500-year flood and 100-year uh, pandemic, and we have uh, we have lived through some things in the last seven months that would become stories we'll tell our people 30, 40 years from now, and we, we lived through it. And we continue to pray for the families who uh, are struggling on both ends of that, but uh, we stick together as this community has for nearly 200 years, I think we're in pretty good shape. So this has been a blast for Rich and I, thanks to uh, Matt Richardson and, and Matt Thomas for asking us to get involved, all the MCTV volunteers. If you see somebody with one of these shirts or coats on in the community, go up and do that knuckle shake or that elbow shake that we've got to do until we can fist bump or something. But these folks put in a lot of time and effort to keep Midland, Michigan on the cutting edge of information, government activities, sports arts activities and all the things that are going on in this fine community mctv does it for you for my partner rich violet all of the volunteers and staff of mctv that i've mentioned and those i've missed my name is dale robbins have the best first weekend of fall 2020 you've ever had because that's this weekend we will see you next time great to have you along